Good evening, doctors, and welcome to our webinar this evening. As the invites um, communicated, we have um, tonight uh, our, our, our lead panelist and host is uh, Jared Crane, who heads up our products um, at, at HealthBridge. And really, we thought it would be a great, uh, a great opportunity to get Jared to share with us um, the experiences that many or hundreds of clients that have taken up HealthBridge Clinical have had as they've transitioned from a paper-based practice to going um, fully digital. As Jared um, also alluded to, for those that joined early, we are committed to keeping the webinar short and sweet. 18 minutes with allowing for two minutes of, of q and I see we've, we've eaten into those, so that to those two minutes, but we should have some time at the end. Um, at any point in time, if you've got a question, please um, use the, the Zoom functionality, the um, either post a question um, through on onto the, the chat and I'll keep an eye on the questions that come through and just interrupt um, Jared whilst he's um, taking us through demoing a bit of the product and also sharing some of our clients' experiences. Um, the webinar is also being recorded and our marketing team will share um, the webinar together with a survey um, at the end of um, tonight's uh, webinar. And I think that that's it from me. Um, over to you, Jared. Cool. Thanks, Yvonne. Um, so I'm as as you mentioned, you've got your stopwatch. If I start rambling too much, you'll you'll just wave me down or if there's any questions. Uh, try wrap this up in 18 minutes as promised. Uh, we, and it's it's going to be practical. So you know, this is not a full comprehensive demo of the system or what to look at into, you know, when choosing an EMR and what are the options in the market and how, how go about it. This is really just three things to, to, to make to make it real, to make it practical um, from the experience we've seen from, from hundreds of doctors moving to a, a digital world. Okay, so I'm going to now uh, share screen quick. And Yvonne, if you'll just let me know, you should see yes, my, uh, my patient file. Yes. Okay, great. So I, I'm going to start here on, on, the, on the patient file and the patient record. Uh, I think I'm going to touch on three areas. One is what to do with your existing patient files and, and what approaches you can take there, because that is a frequently asked question in all our, our webinars, and it's very practical. The second is ways of working. It's great if you can get rid of your paper file, but actually, how do you how do you capture notes electronically? What are the different ways of doing it? What are the different options? What works? Because there isn't actually one size fits all, which is a good thing. Um, and then lastly, an overlooked area of um, making it practically work is in your practice and how it works with the admin person. So we know the, the admin uh, aspect of your practice is important. You don't want something that's in conflict with your admin person. When people think clinical, they don't often appreciate, or when they think EMR, they don't appreciate the clinical and admin together aspect of it. So jumping straight into the patient file. Now, a lot of like there's there's a few ways of approaching this. So, so right now you can see a um, a digital patient file. So you can see it's I'll zoom in one. It's got my name. Um, it's got information. You know who's my wife. What are the medicines I'm on? I'm asthmatic. It's controlled. My hypertension is uncontrolled. I'm on Ventolin, Monflow. This is all great, and we can go into how that's captured. But in order to transition to this, what do you do with your paper files? You'll see here when I scroll down, there's a summary of the your historic notes. And this is scanned in by the admin person. And the, the most practical way we've seen is that instead of taking all of them and trying to scan them and driving your admin person uh, a little bit crazy, is that you transition to, to, the, to scanning them in. So every time a patient comes in, you take the paper file, you scan it against the record, your admin person scans against the record, it's really quick and easy. So we give them an interface, it's, it's just scanning the notes in, and then you have them as a, a against the patient's file that you can open at any point. We find this better than doing it in, in a big batch because what you'll find that over the course of a few months that most of the files get digitized, uh, those files can either be archived what we've also seen, uh, which is quite a nice touch, is some, some doctors give the files to the patient. So it's almost a way of, of recognizing that the practice is going digital, it, um, electronic, 
uh, moving into kind of the new age, it's, it's a bit of a, a showing off um, a modern practice. So here's your file, you don't need any more, everything is digitized, you can take it home with you, everything's poppy protected, safe, secure, here's your file, which is, which is quite a nice touch. So as the patient comes, there's, that's, that's the one way we've seen quite work quite well. There are some files that you, you may not want to digitize, you may want to keep in, in archive. Um, so another approach we've seen quite a few practices is that um, the file goes in with the doctor, uh, with the patient to the doctor. The doctor will have two stickers, like a red sticker and a green sticker. Red sticker means just archive it, uh, put it in, in, in storage. Green sticker means I actually need this relevant information, scan it and put it in. So if the file just contains uh, that Jared once was there three years ago for a sore throat, maybe you don't want to digitize it put a red sticker on, give it to the admin person, they archive it. So it's, it's little tricks like that that we help the practice with in order to move the file electronically and then get rid of that, that paper file. And Jared, I mean, the one, one of the, at least the feedback that I often get is that you often only need to scan those first two or three pages of the patient yep. file. So it's the most recent um, history um, mm -hmm. that you've had with with the patient so many I know many of our doctors haven't you know certainly don't scan to, for patients that have nice big thick files the entire yeah the entire file yeah again 100 again if it's a chronic patient with years of history that's relevant you can scan it all if it's a mm -hmm. patient with acute history of, of various things you can scan the relevant information and and, and archive the file it, it, it kind of depends also what you want to do with the file because you've got to keep the record for um, x number of years so if you're going to keep it and archive it then you don't really have to scan all of it so it's electronic um again like it, it, there are different what we've seen this is what we've seen work we have also seen some practices hire someone uh, to scan them all in it's a, it's a quite a long process um the best success has been doing them one by one. The sticker system as well um, has, has worked really well and it's easily accessible. And then this information, if, you know, to capture it. So this looks, uh, you know, very nice and it gives you everything you need about the patient from lifestyle, surgical information, all of this gets captured during consultation. Or if you want to quickly amend something, you can just click on one of these cards and say, well, Jared's now a smoker, unfortunately, and we can say he stopped drinking although those two generally don't go hand in hand. Um, and you can go back to the file and you can see no longer, whoops, <clears throat> clicked on again, no longer um, drinking, but is a smoker. So very quick and easy to start populating that information. So that, that speaks to the file. Um, it, it's actually pretty straightforward. It's the one thing practices always think, oh, geez, I've got all these records. You know, the appeal is to get rid of them, free up space in the practice. It actually isn't as as cumbersome as you think. It's just rather take it with each patient as opposed to trying to get it to a big batch. Okay, <clears throat> next next one is ways of working. So this is really important. Um, you can have you can get rid of your files quite easily, but how do you transition? You know, a lot of doctors are like, oh, I'm I'm not great with typing, or I'm not sure I'm going to be too engaged with the system, not engaged enough with the patient. We haven't created one way of, of doing notes. We've, we've actually created four different ways, depending on, on how you want to practice um, and, and what's the easiest for you and what you're most comfortable with. So the, a very basic way, if I, if I scroll down here on, on the file, you'll see I have a, a complete history of, of the patient and all the consultations. I can see, and this is all bogus dummy data, by the way, I can see that um, patient came in on the 9th of May, I can see they were in again on the 27th of May, augment and what is, or like that, that's the history. Now, now to create these notes and add to it, this the one very simple way is just to add a note on the timeline. So we can say patient complains of sore throat uh, on observation, the red, uh, no infection, um, plan, bed rest, uh, and we can say, um, painkillers and and the notes are done very easy they're on the timeline next time you open here you can see oh okay the patient was here on the 1st of september uh on observer here sore throat and observation red no infection um bed rest, the plan was bed rest painkillers it's like it can be that easy um to capture a note that's like the no frills no fuss fuss way of doing it there's the the consultation mode 
Um, and then th this opens more options to you, again, based on your preference. The one we not is, is templates. We're not clinicians. We worked with doctors. So for instance, we have the, the, the flow is the symptoms, examination, diagnose, prescribe, and plan. It's kind of the SOAP model, really, with a slight variation of the words. And the first step in terms of symptoms is are, are templates that doctors have helped uh, co-create. So we had a group of doctors. They would get together and say, cool, for a COVID-19 visit, these are the symptoms you'd need to ask about. And you can say fever, yes, cough, no, uh, body pains, yes, uh, loss of taste, yes. It's not, you don't have to go through every question. You just do whatever's relevant. Uh, you can add a little note to it. Um, start it in the morning. So this, this is a really, and you'll see down the side here, the consultation is creating all these notes as I click on this. So if I say shortness of breath, yes, it adds it. So very, very quick and easy. And that interaction with the patient, they know what you're doing because they can see you referencing this and asking questions and taking notes. So it's, it's not like you're buried, buried in the computer. Uh, so Jared, that's, we, mm -hmm. we have a question, not Shoot. to break the flow, but when you're no, reading, no, for it. Um, one of the doctors has asked, um, surely the pen is still faster. Uh, yeah. The, the, the pen beats. Beats um, paper. Beats paper, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to, uh, let me address it. I'm going to address it in two places. The, the first place. So I've shown you the template. Uh, the second one is hundred percent the pen. So that's another way of working um, where if you have an, an iPad or a tablet, uh, you can open up and, and use the pen to write notes. I'm on a laptop. So it's a little bit tricky. Uh, there are templates as well. So you can use one of our stock standard ones, or you can upload your own ones. And, and it could even be your your assessment form that you can just upload and, and, and tick and cross. Uh, you can write notes as well, uh, toe, X, Y, Z, whatever it might be. So yeah, absolutely. The pen, uh, the, the pen is still convenient and you can use the pen as well. So that's another way of capturing notes. Um, and then the last way is in the consultation, you can also type. So you can say, again, like if you're comfortable typing, you can type, type the symptom notes. The template is, is both for examination and symptoms. So I'll, I'll, I'll just change it to, um, let's do uh, chest pain as an example. If I go to examination, you'll see that the questions are, are relevant to chest pain and you can, you can go through the, the template that doctors have created, um, not us. So you can use a stylus, you can type, you can use the templates, you can create a quick note instead of going through a consultation flow or you can actually do a, a consultation. So, and this again, is, all of this adds to the timeline, which you showed us in the beginning. Yeah, exactly. Anything you do here, become part of your record. You can see an example of one I've completed before, the COVID one. It's got everything we ticked. It's got your script. It's got your sick note. Uh, it's all there. Uh, look, the, the, the other thing is we can adjust this. There's, there's different ways of setting it up. So if I go to another dummy practice and I go into this consultation, you'll see the, the tabs at the top are a bit different. It's no longer symptoms, examination. This setup is, I just want to capture some basic notes. Uh, I want to take a photo potentially. Um, and then I want to add an RC10 code and hit finish and sends it off. So super simple, streamlined. There's more than one way of, of working and I think that's what's important is is you know there's this configurability there the other uh, I'm, I'm going to get to the admin part for in two minutes look the the pen is always convenient um and uh, there was actually a webinar today a Gibbs webinar where the doctors are talking about you know at med school you trained with a pen and paper so it's it's, it's almost natural it is quick and easy but there are little things in the system that you'll find that'll that'll far outweigh the benefit of, of saving a few seconds. So I'll, I'll give a good example, which is medicine. You can quickly open a script. You can write Augmentin, BD, you know, five days, whatever it is, sign it quickly and hand it to the patient. It's, it's quick and easy. What um, going digital offers you, for instance, if I search for Augmentin, uh, Augmentin BD, so the, the same example I used, when I open the screen, I can just quickly say, cool, I'll, I'll choose Augmentin BD, it's already learned from, from your history that it's one tablet twice a day and you can prescribe it. But then you might notice that oh, Augmentin is quite expensive. Maybe I'd go with Adco Co Moxiclav. But actually, this patient is covered as part of their formulary 
for Sandoz Comox Eclair of 625. Now this a paper, a paper can't do, so it might be really quick, but here it gives you, you know, all the conversations you might uh, have with the patients. Is this covered by, by the, the formulary benefits? Um, what is the price? And, and then in terms of the dosage, it's, it's already pre-populated based on what we've learned from your usage. And, and once you get used to this, it's, it's lightning. So, you know, you can type uh, Panado as an example, opens the screen. I can say, cool, Panado, I want to give one capsule three times a day, add to prescription and done. So it really is quick. And then you can email it off to the pharmacy. So I, I wasn't really going to go down uh, showing features and whatnot, but it's just an example where your know, paper and pen is quick, mm -hmm. but there's additional benefits from, from moving electronically that, I mean, here again, for instance, I can see there's contraindications between Concerta and Ventolin, and I can see the reasons why, and it can prompt you. This is the benefit of, of digitization. It's not just saving space with paper files, but it's the advantages you get as a, as a clinician um, as well. Okay, then lastly, uh, the under in the last minute and a bit, yes. one under underutilized or not underutilized, under uh, just not considered really is the interaction with the with the admin side of your practice. Being able to open your calendar and see that um, there's Brian Smith at six thirty for regular consultation. Jared is here for flu and cough at seven o'clock. Uh, Matthew has got a video consult. I can see who's in my waiting room. Um, I can see that Jared, when I open the file, there's a note uh, from the admin person that uh, Jared suspects they have COVID. So you know who's in your practice. You know how long they've been waiting in your practice. So Jared arrived. He was checked in 19 minutes ago. So he's been waiting 19 minutes already. And you know what he's there for. There is um, a... Yes, sorry, I'm, I'm really going quickly. Go for it. No, we, we, uh, another question that we have, and I think it's... Um, probably from a, um, a doctor that isn't currently a client of, of Healthbridge, which was, mm -hmm. well, how does this information get into uh, the, how does it get into the EMR? Brilliant, brilliant. It's a great question. So there's the, the PMA, um, so the, the practice management side um, that the admin person would use. This, this really, I mean, this here's your calendar, your accounts, your invoices, your age analysis, your statements the typical things that an admin person would use. And we've integrated this with the EMR while keeping the EMR side separate. So the admin person doesn't have the clinical information, um, but at the same time, you as a clinician have a view of, of what's been captured and, and processed in the, in the admin side. So I can see Jared's here. When I open it, uh, there's Jared's liable for 2000 Rand. It's red, he's out of funds, so I may want to have that conversation with him or consider it when I'm dispensing or prescribing. Uh, there's a note from the admin person. There's even a to-do list. So uh, I can see today I need to phone Jared. Um, I can open it up. Uh, his path results are normal. I can assign this to a nurse in the practice if I want to. I can assign it to another doctor. I can see I have some overdue tasks. I need to phone um, Mr. Smith back. I have a pathology follow-up I need to do. This is admin. It's, I mean, it's clinical in nature as well, some of this, but it's, it's really admin, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Integration with your practice, you, which is like people just don't consider when, when moving to an EMR and it's vitally important. You know, the admin person's captured the patient, they've teed them up for you, they're in your waiting room. Um, you, can, you can open it up, you can continue the consult, it will start the consultation and, and continue. It's, it's really, really quick and, and simple. Okay, that was a real real crash course, 20 minutes overview of, of three practical things. So patient files, do them one by one, have a sticker system. This is something we can help the practice with too. Ways of working, figure out what works best. You know, the typing, stylus, templates, what flow you'd like in it. And three is just a, like consider how this is actually a benefit uh, for the admin person. The, the clinical notes also can generate the invoice, send it off to the admin person. Uh, it really is um, an important element to, to moving digital. Whew, feels like I went really quick. You, uh, you, did, you, did, you did go very quick, but we said we were going to make it 20 minutes. And I, I also completely forgot to introduce oops. myself in the as we got started, because I was also trying to go so quickly. But it's a, you've given me a good on-ramp, which is... Um, 
So I, I joined Jared tonight as I, I look after the um, client service teams at Healthbridge. And in addition to what Jared has shared about um, the, the fact that the Healthbridge Clinical is such an easy um, application to use in order to go digital, we also have a team of experts at Healthbridge um, that will assist your practice in coming up with a bespoke way for your practice to go digital. So like Jared in the beginning, um, you know, he highlighted that there are four different options in order to, for you to take notes and how you want to scan. A consultant will come into, a business consultant will work with you and your staff to figure out what is unique to your practice in terms of, of going digital and putting that strategy um, together, which we often uh, get complimented um, in, in terms of that it's it's not just that the application is easy to use, but that you also have somebody that can um, guide you through um, through the process of going of going digital. And I think we've done well. We've gone over to, over two minutes. Uh, any? Let me just see if there are any additional uh, questions. It, there, there are other webinars that are recorded where I don't speak as fast and, and fly through things. Um, and we, we do, you know, maybe that if, if you do want to follow up with, with a consultant, there will be a survey that goes out. If you want to know more information, this really wasn't meant to be a, a comprehensive, uh, like I haven't covered the pathology results that come in. I haven't covered oh, um, the electronic scripting and sick notes and QR codes for fraud to make sure um, notes can't be copied. There really is a lot of stuff. It's just to give a practical sense of, you know, we've, we've had over 2 million consultations completed in the last 12 months on the system. So um, that, that, then the only way we've really been successful is by making it easy, by making it, you know, fit the way you work as opposed to you having to fit into a, a digital system. I think we've covered most of the questions, Yvonne. Uh, we um, have. I've had a look. There's nothing else. Um, but yeah, as Jared mentioned, um, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, those of you that are already clients of Healthbridge, um, also reach out to your business consultant. Um, if you need, if you have any questions or want to start the digital journey, we would be more than happy to um, to assist you. And on that note. Have a good evening, everyone. Have Thanks. a good evening and enjoy the rest of the first of spring. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Yvonne. Take care. Thanks. Thanks Thank guys. you, Dr. Bye. Bye. Bye.